Let's see what's going to happen then. Craig Lomax in the Citroen C1s on the outside. Nick Snays alongside him. Green light and go. Good start there from Nick Snays. Not bad at all, though, as it looks like Craig Lomax in the Citroen C1 is going to have the whole shot, but he goes for the joker lap on the first time. So it's Nick Snays from Phil Chicken then who uh, run in first and second place. And then it is going to be Craig Lomax who's on that joker lap with a fair bit of daylight now between himself, but crucially clear track so he can try and do the undercut, essentially, with no other surrounding traffic. Yeah, a bit of a time trial for Craig Lomax further back as Nick Snoyes and Phil Chicken come out of the Devil's Elbow for the first time. The Belgian visitor who has got a number of COVID tests before, during and after the events and he's been able to get across here even with COVID and the travel restrictions and the trouble that has been the difficulty for these drivers. It hasn't pissed off Nick Snoyes. He had hoped to race in this series last season, but sadly the COVID restrictions and quarantine and rules meant he was unable to, but he's here at the home of Rallycross today and he is leading the Super 1600 final, helped no doubt by the absence of Darren Scott, the sitting born man who was due to be the pole sitter for this time, it was unable to start the final and that leaves the Belgian Nick Sinoise who's been taken under the wing of Jos Sterkens for many years. He leads the way, going up Harry Hill into the North Bend hairpin, hard on the brakes in this little Ford KA, which is a very neatly turned out car for the former European touring car rallycross racer. He's a very quick peddler, is Nick, as you can see how committed he was into Paddock Bend that time around. Nick's noise is rapid, we know that, and Phil Chicken is trying to stay with him as Craig Lomax is the one really to watch as Nick Snoyes now goes into the joker lap so this will see a change for the lead Phil Chicken will come through to take what is really an artificial lead because Phil's not jokered yet and Craig Lomax already has and he comes back ahead of Nick Snoyes so we have a change for what is effectively top spot Craig Lomax in the brand new Citroen C1 leads the field into Devil's Elbow or does he because Nick Snoyes in the Ford KA nips back up the inside for the Devil's Elbow exit. Craig Lomax is hard on the brakes in that little C1 for the North Bend Airbin, but Nick Sinoy's just muscles his way back past, and now they've really got to work together to try and catch Phil Chicken out front. Yeah, they certainly have going into Paddock Bend. Uh, they are now, and Phil Chicken, as you said, he's got a pretty unassailable lead. Nick Snays didn't actually have a brilliant joker, which would have cost him time, and uh, that certainly would have had an impact on his uh, positioning then uh, with regards to where he came out uh, in relation to Craig Lomax as well. Bit wide there for Phil Chicken in front. That gap is now coming down though, so these guys are about to run nose to tail with one another. And let's see whether they're going to be able to find their way past Phil Chicken. There's two laps remaining here at Lyndon Hill. A little bit wide into the devil's elbow there for Phil. And that's going to allow Nick Snays to pull alongside as they come up the top of Harry Hill. They're running side by side. On the outside then is Nick Snays. He's got it done even before the braking zone. Great driving there from the number 51 then. So he manages to find his way back through into the race lead. The KA is now leading the way in the Super 1600s final. Yep, and Phil Chicken in second spot still with that joker to do, so will fall out of contention. It's Nick Sinoy's versus Craig Lomax, really, for top spot as Chicken exits stage left down into Pilgrims. He disappears for the joker lap, and that leaves us down to two. It's a straight fight to the flag now between Nick Sinoy's in the Ford KA and Craig Lomax in the brand new Citroen C1. Great work by the team to get this car built up into what is a lovely looking livery as well. And it's working a treat. It's right on the pace for Craig Lomax. He will be delighted with this. The Extreme Running Cross team worked really hard over the winter to change what was a Citroen C2 to Citroen C1. And it's really working well. Craig Lomax flying as he tries to catch Nick Sinoy's with just one of the bend or so laps to go <laughs> into the final series of corners we go there is Craig Lomax very short wheelbase of course on the uh, front two cars a little bit shorter than the Citroen C2 of Phil Chicken which sits in third position then in this race so not the most action-packed final we're going to get as Nick Snoyes is now able to pull out a gap over uh, Craig Lomax there is Phil Chicken who jokered on that last lap which is why the gap is uh, so big as it was uh, to race number uh, to the second place finisher uh, meanwhile I should say up the top of the hill we go then with Nick Snays and a great race and this has been the best show we've seen of him all day because uh, he's been relatively quick so far here today but hasn't quite had the pace to fight at the sharper end of the field and has been competing of course with the super national cars so far here today uh, but now competing with 
the uh, just 16, Super 1600 cars on the grid. And he comes over the timing line to take the win in the final for the Super 1600s. Nick Snays in the number 51 wins ahead of Craig Lomax in second position. It'll be Phil Chicken who will come home in third place at the end then of that race. Very impressive result indeed.